Welcome to the Relationship Cycle with Jorge and Nelsa, where we talk about dating to divorce and everything in between. Hey, good people. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And today we have a fun show to talk about. Um, I feel that since we've kind of been working our way with the uh, relationship cycle, um, once people feel like they're ready to date, what's some good, you know, practices and habits that people need to, need to get in mind uh, in the habit of doing right. uh, when they get out there and start meeting people and start going out on dates? Right. Um, and so you came up with the, uh, with our title today, probably dating with purpose. And I think that's a great, um, a great encapsulator for um what steps do we take as we get ready to head out for what I call the meet and greet? You know, Absolutely. the first time is always like the meet and greet because I want to get a chance to spill you out if we've been talking and chatting, texting, you know, even if we've done FaceTime or something like that, sure. video or whatever. It's still not the same as the chemistry that you feel or don't feel when you're in person with somebody. So, you know, prepping for that, you know, being ready for that situation. I think everybody's, I could have used this show. I wish, I, I wish I would have known some stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, we'll kick us off then. Uh, what's up first? Um, I feel like probably the, the first thing that we probably need to make sure and lay out for man and woman or whomever mm -hmm. is out there trying to date and meet people is safety. Yeah. I think safety yes. is important. Um, I feel like whenever you're going to meet somebody new, make sure that you're doing it and you feel comfortable. Yes. Because if you're meeting somebody somewhere and you're not comfortable, you're already getting off on the wrong foot. Yeah. Because in my opinion, if you're trying to meet somebody and you're trying to gauge and have a good time and vibe, but you don't feel safe, like that to me just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think that encapsulates too, not just physical safety, but psychological safety. Because mm -hmm. uh, like you're saying, if, if I'm uncomfortable physically, then I'm not going to be in a safe headspace with you to really open up, talk to you, connect, whatever. Uh, so one of the things that I do, um, Poppy, is I have friends that I text. I send the picture of the guy that I'm going out with. I send the information for where we're going on our date. And then I share my location through my phone That's with smart. those people. Very, because very I want to make sure that at all times, somebody knows where I am with a new person, especially. Um, I go somewhere public, you know, we're going to mm -hmm. go to a restaurant or we're going to go to, um, I typically don't go, um, uh, I'll go to a park if it's up in the day, yeah. especially in nice, you know, weather, spring, summer. That sounds like a quarantine day. Yeah, it was, it was. <laughs> when, when, the was, was when the world was shut I down. When the world was shut down. I did that. There's, I had, there's a, um. There's a trail right behind my neighborhood, and I did that a couple of times where we met out on the trail. It was during the day. Yeah. There was a lot of other people walking their dogs right. and working out, too, so it was like a good, safe, public haven mm -hmm. for people just to meet. And, you know, listen, working out together can actually be a fun meet and greet as yes. well. If some people like to, you know, have a good workout. Um, that can be kind of a unique, unorthodox way to meet people, but yeah. it can still be enjoyable, especially if it's something that you both enjoy. Exactly. Um, and I think that's important because, you know, we've talked a little bit about intimacy and communication. You know, you're building a foundation with that first meet and greet to say either we do or don't have enough in common to keep going. So, you know, start the way you want to finish is, is what I say. But um, safety, though, for sure for men, because I'm like, you don't want to get somewhere with a woman who may um, say that you've done something you haven't done or yeah. you don't want to get caught out there um, saying you had advances made or something happened in your apartment or, you know, somewhere where it's just the two of you and there's no one. Else, there's, there aren't other people around to be able to verify the truth of a story. This has never happened to me, um, but I've heard heard on a podcast where this guy, he had this girl come over. And, you know, they had a good time. They did their thing. And then he wakes up and his wallet was missing. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, so, that's, that's traumatic. Hey, I mean, man. Yeah, it yeah. sounds crazy. Like, that sounds like a crazy um, story on some movie or something. But, you know, there are probably many people out there listening who has, that, has had that happen to them or something, you know, somebody's drugged them or you know, you just, you can never be, um, I don't want to be so uptight that I don't want to do anything because I'm yeah. so scared. I don't want to go. But at the same time, I want to, I want to be in the same, you know, position that I was left. I want to be, you know, safe. I want to be still myself. I don't want to be out my mind. 
Um, so I think that's number one. Um, then I think for my for my sake, um, moving past you know just safety, I want to know what what are we going to do? Like not just our activity, but are we just going to meet and greet to see if we have chemistry? And I've said that to people before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's just see if we even hit it off. Right. Um, I'm going to, you know, just have dinner. Um, you know, hey, you want to just let's go hang out. Let's get a cup of coffee. Let's just talk, have a conversation. Uh, and then after after that, I've been like, you know what? I don't really think that we're a good match, but best of luck to you. So, um on that, on those, I will say, I always come prepared to pay my own way. Oh, absolutely. You shouldn't listen. You should, work out. <laughs> you should never assume that the guy is going to pick up the tab. Um, yeah. This is, it's, it's a new era. It's a new, it's a new era that we live yeah. in now. And people, some of the old school principles, they just don't get honored anymore. But I will say a lot of people, you know, kind of, Assume that, hey, let's just go get dinner. But there, there are some other activities that people can do. Um, Besides, so I've met at parks before. Yeah. I met at trails. And, you know, it was during the day. Right. So, you know, I'm not going to go meet kayaking. somebody. kayaking. That's, pre that's pretty cool. Yeah. And something outside, thinking mm -hmm. outside the box a little bit. Um, maybe going to an event like a festival. Yeah. Or uh, maybe going sporting to. sporting event. Yeah. yeah, or maybe a sporting event. Or going to a concert. You mm -hmm. know, something like that. That would be kind of cool and it kind of breaks the mold of going to a dinner and making it feel like it's some sort of interview or something yeah, exactly you know? so maybe something like that um sometimes breakfast dates can be fun you know Absolutely. it doesn't always have to be at night you Absolutely. know you can go meet at a, a, a cool brunch spot uh get some good breakfast go beat up some pancakes and waffles yeah. and see what happens uh, it doesn't always have to be at night. I've even done lunch dates too. Yeah. You know, and sometimes, listen, some people are busy. Some people have small children. Right. Some people have demanding jobs. And sometimes it's hard for them to have a night off. So, yeah. uh, you know, a lunch sometimes is, is what they can do. So it's not always, I want people to think out, think outside the box to not always pigeonhole themselves to, right. hey, it's got to be dinner or else. Like you can do coffee dates, work Church. out together. I mean, if you're, if you worship together, you know, on most uh, dating sites, they have whether you're spiritual mm. or what your background is. It's a good idea. So if you're, you know, into church programs or singing or something like that, that may be now. That may be one of those things where if this is the first time you're meeting somebody, <laughs> you may not want to bring them to church because everybody's going to assume, yeah. like, oh, That's is it your man? Oh, like, yeah. Like, is he ready to accept Jesus in his oh, heart? No. <laughs> That's too much, y'all. That's too much. So but, let's move yeah. forward. Uh, I want to talk about roles uh -huh. because, listen, I, I do feel that as men um, – we do need to take leadership and ownership mm -hmm. of taking a woman out. Okay. What do you um, mean by that, Poppy? Uh, I'm thinking like, hey, you know what? If if you as a man are interested in meeting a woman mm -hmm. and you want to meet her, then the more onus you take on planning that meet, I think the better off it's going to it's going to go. It will be appreciated. I can say that for sure. And the reason that I think is because, and I've heard this from from women's perspective, is that um, you know sometimes they have demanding jobs, they have families that they have to care for, they have mm -hmm. children that they have to worry about. And let's be real, most women normally take a little longer to get ready than men. For hey, men, hey, I can get ready. Hey. I, I, I can get ready that. in 15 minutes. 15 minutes, <laughs> and I'm almost ready to rock. Ladies, we will not. we we'll just let that go on by. <laughs> Let's let that go on by. <laughs> so I think as men, we have to definitely take the ownership of finding out what is an activity, regardless of what you do. Find mm -hmm. out an activity that you both can enjoy mm -hmm. and feel comfortable and safe with, and just let her know, hey, how about Saturday? How about Sunday? Right. At this time... Let's go there, see you there. Anything comes up, let me know. Because I feel like oftentimes, I've heard this from women, is they get frustrated because apparently they're like, okay, is this dude a pen pal or is this dude really trying to meet me? Right, right. <laughs> because you keep going like a, you know, very back indecisive. and forth. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I appreciate just the decisiveness. Uh, not, not just take control of the date and don't give me a say, but have something in mind that you want to propose and now, again, I know there are women out there and men, too, who, 
you know, are going to give you five excuses for why they don't want to do X, Y, and Z or every allergy they have or whatever. So we're not talking about those people, but right. you know, if you give me a, Hey, how about we meet up at this place to do dinner and have a you know a drink after or something like that. And is this date good for you? That's what I'm looking for. Sometimes, sometimes it's like, I don't want to be the only one that looks like I'm putting the energy into coming up with something to do. And then it's a yes or a no from your end. Uh, you know, can you help me out, bro? Please. Like, please and, uh, give me listen, some- I'm on that. I'm on the bandwagon of as a man, if you're interested in a woman, then show that you're interested. Put exactly. in a little effort. Right. All, all you got to do is ask her, what do you like to eat? Right. That's normally what I do. What do you like to eat? Or what do you not like to eat? Right. And then go from there. Exactly. Do you like coffee? Do you like cocktails? Do you like beer? Do you like a brewery? Just yeah. there's so many different places that you can meet. And with a few questions, yeah. you can literally come up with a, with a plan. But as a man, you got to take charge. And it starts from day one with planning a date. Exactly. And I think to, you know, to give um, women a a little bit of credit too for this, you know, it's okay to pursue a man and show him you're interested in terms of, hey, I really like to do X, Y, Z. Are you interested? I've asked multiple um, (laughs) prospective dates. Prospects? Prospects, (laughs) yes. (laughs) They didn't all materialize. But do you like to play tennis? Do you like to shoot pool? Those are Mm. things that I enjoy. So, you know, give him some help, ladies, you know, gentlemen, help out your partner, whoever it is that you're you're trying to go out with by giving them a little bit of information. Like people are not mind readers, especially when they don't know you well enough to, you know, we're not talking about somebody you've been with for 15, 20 years that ought to know what you like and ought to be able to create a date night. We're talking about a first date. So, Help them out, give them some information, but uh, hang on, and we're going to be right back after this, okay? All right, so we're back, and up next, we're going to talk a little bit about dating etiquette. So Mm. if you have not been out in these streets (laughs) in a while, uh, things have really changed, but then I think some things always remain the same. Um, I just think, um, you know, common courtesy ought to be, you know, on everybody's part, no matter if you're uh, same sex dating, if you're, um, you know, heterosexual, if you're whatever, common courtesy is common courtesy is common courtesy in my mind. And I'm a, I'm a Southerner, Southern Belle, born and bred. And so for me, you know, using your manners, saying please and thank you. And I know that sounds ridiculous on this um, you recording would be to some people, but you, would be I, you know what? I have seen people, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't care to be in the company of somebody who is rude to other people. So Mm. I've had dates who didn't tip well. Um, I mean, literally left like a $2 tip on a $40 meal. And I was just like, Mm. "Mm -mm, mm -mm." especially during the pandemic. And it was like restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that was like, if I see you treat somebody in a situation that is not as good as yours, uh, and this was somebody that talked about all the stuff they had and all the stuff they, you know, did and money coming in all the time, double jobs and all this. And I was just thinking, if you would treat somebody like this who's in this situation with that kind of disregard, you're not really the person for me because how you treat somebody is important. So I think just common courtesy is, is number one. So, Poppy, let me ask you this because all the ladies are waiting. I know they want to know. What's up? Opening doors. Waiting on the lady to get in, get out. What do you think? Is that is that old school, new school? Is I it listen, doable? I'm I'm here to say that I think as men, we definitely need to bring back some of those the, those old school things, right? That we've seen our dads do, or in movies and TVs, our grandfathers, whatnot, which is opening the doors okay. for women, opening the car door mm-hmm. for a woman. Um, do you do it every time? You know what? Sometimes I might slip up, but I do try to, I try to, I try to be consistent, mm-hmm. but I, listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to swear that I do it every damn time. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure honest, sometimes sometimes I might slip up, but more often than not, you know, those morals should, should always be with you no matter where you go. Okay. But here's the thing. If you, if you got good manners, more often than not, you're going to be okay. You okay. may have a bad day or you may be off or whatever. And you might forget, you might mm-hmm. slip up, but for the most part, if you know, if if that's ingrained in you, then I think you'll be fine. But I think as men, we do need to get in the habit of be a gentleman, man. Right. Like, listen, man, it, that's free. Like, manners right. is free. Like, yeah. good manners, 
behaving like a gentleman, um, being polite, like that stuff, man, that I was, that was ingrained in me as, as growing up. As a, my parents, my mom, my dad, they were big on that. They didn't play that stuff. Right. So. And I think ladies, I was looking at a meme. Um, it might've been a TikTok where uh, the guy had given his lady some flowers and she was on TikTok telling people, um, well, he gave me these flowers, but he didn't get them from a florist. He got them from the grocery store. They're not my favorite. He did all right, but it could have been better. Like she was critiquing his mm. gift on TikTok. And so one of the, the comments or, you know, like when people do respond to a TikTok or whatever, one of them was that um, this is why men quit trying. And I responded. I, I just thought I was going to comment because I was like, uh, this is just rude behavior. When somebody thinks about you, it ought to be enough to just say thank you. Even if it's not what you wanted, if it's not what you asked for, or you, you know, didn't really feel like it was exactly, you know, hit the ballpark. Sometimes the but gesture, somebody, the gesture yeah, should go a long way. Like the, the gesture. Counted, like, right? you know what? I prefer roses, but he brought me daisies, but damn, that was nice of him to think of me like that and bring me daisies. Or right. hey, you know what? He brought me a, a favorite cookie. You know, I just think right. that that's got to count for something. It right? has to. But, I, and but, also, as yeah. men, I want to put this out there on the airwaves. Uh, once you get to that level, right? If if you're trying to get to know a woman, there is something cool about going up to her door and bringing her flowers mm -hmm. and be like, "Hey, come on, let's go have a good time. I want to take you out. I want to enjoy your company." There is something to be said about that. And for all the men out there, if you want to stand out in this day and age, yes. you know how you stand out? Be I a agree. fucking gentleman. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, be a damn gentleman. When, I, when we sit down at the restaurant, you let her order first. Mm -hmm. You let her order first. When you sit down at the restaurant, pull her chair. Like, if you want to stand out in this day and age, just so, be a gentleman. When are you going to be doing classes, Poppy? How can the people find you? <laughs> <laughs> listen, come hang out with me. I'll give you a class. But I'm I mean, telling you. that's basic stuff, man. But yeah. listen, I've heard some horror stories, man. Don't paw her immediately upon meeting her and have your hands all over her body. No, absolutely no, that's, not. That's, and don't, please don't touch people's hair unless they expressly say Now, I will okay. say this. Now, so now we, you know, we've kind of put out there what a good approach would be for a man, right? Which yeah. is pretty much simple. Be polite and be a gentleman. And I feel like if you do that and you can show a woman that you can be kind, yes. That that's good. That's that you're setting the right tune. Yes. Because a lot of guys are not gentlemen anymore. So when you can show that, hey, I, I have good manners, mm -hmm. I can be a gentleman, I can be kind, that's gonna sit well. Yes. Okay. Uh, because she's gonna be like, damn. You know, I guess chivalry isn't quite dead yet. But you know that needs I mean? to be appreciated too, ladies. Mm. Um, because I feel like, and you know, Poppy and I are coming from a um, heterosexual background. So for those of you who are in same sex or uh, whatever your pronouns are, you know, please take this as generic information. I feel like we need to say that. Um, Facts, yeah. Know. But I feel like it needs to be appreciated because some people um some people have princess what i call princess syndrome mm. and they expect that as their due when that's not really the case it's not like somebody doesn't have to be nice to you they don't have to be kind they don't have to be thoughtful um because there are there are enough jerks in the world that can fulfill the need for somebody but i think being a lady would be seeing the effort, seeing that he's been a gentleman, saying thank you when the door has been open for you and not just receiving it as your due. Now, that's just my opinion. I completely agree. Because I think men that. don't want to feel always so taken for granted. And after a while, you stop respecting the fact that they could be doing this for someone else and not for you. So if, for men that I've talked to, you know, you and I have given that perspective, I feel like I don't want a man to feel like I don't appreciate what he's doing for me. And then he stops doing it or mm. he takes it somewhere else. Absolutely. So. I will say this. Um, something that I've noticed that disappointed me and or disappoints me that I've noticed a lot um, when I would take women out, regardless of what the outcome was, mm -hmm. whether we didn't vibe or we just weren't on the same page or mm -hmm. it just wasn't ideal for whatever reason. Oftentimes, I noticed several women that did not say thank you after the day. Really? And here, and my thing is this. I don't give a damn if you buy me a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. You buy me a cup of coffee, I need to say thank you. 
Right. And that was disappointing that I noticed that. And that that happened. I, it was a few times I called women out while on the date. I'm like, you're right. not gonna say thank you, right? Because I'm big on manners. Listen, yeah. manners are big to me. Me too. Like if I see bad manners, that's a huge turn, turn off for me. Yep. And I listen. I did it a couple of times. A couple of women. I just felt like, damn, I gotta get this off my chest. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, got, bad, I gotta call. Like, yeah, because you know yeah. uh, the date probably wasn't that well. And then on top of that. Um, I remember one girl was like, well, I offered to pay. And I'm like, that's not the point. No. The point is that I said, hey, don't worry about it. I got it. And you still didn't even bother to say thank you. Right. So I've, I've seen that, you know, more more than I expected it to see now that, you know, I've been separated for a while and uh, soon to be divorced. And that's disappointing. So ladies... Thank you goes a long way. Yeah, I agree. Uh, totally. Uh, and I think with dating etiquette, too, you know, talking about, you know, are we going to go Dutch? Are we going to because um, that was going to be one of our questions is who pays, you know, Oof. in this day and age that could, that could me, really go left. Um, listen, I'm old school with some of that stuff. So my thing is this. If if it was my idea to be like, hey, let's go out mm -hmm. or let me take you out or, hey, join me to do this mm -hmm. or, hey, let's go get coffee or let me take you to my favorite coffee shop or bakery or whatever, mm -hmm. then to me, I'm of the mindset that I'm going to treat. Right. Um, and I think most people tend to, to believe that, you know, the man should take the onus with that. Nothing wrong with that, particularly on the first date. Um, however, as a man, if I've taken a woman out I don't know, three, four times. Mm -hmm. that, that would be an equivalent of about a month. Nice. Four or five weeks of spending time together. Uh, it would be nice for her to not even, she doesn't even have to pick up the tab. She nice. can just offer. Offer. Yeah. And then I can be like, you know what? Okay, mommy, you know what? Go ahead. I'll, I'll accept the beer that you're buying me or the mm -hmm. cup of coffee that you're buying me. Or I may be like, you know what? I got this. Don't worry about it. But yeah. I appreciate you offering. Right. But there's been some times where I, I stopped and, and thought, I was like, okay, is this woman trying to get to know me or is she trying to get to know my wallet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's true. Sometimes it be like that because there's yeah. some women, They, you know what's funny? I actually saw this on Facebook the other day. It was like some bullshit study that they had and they <laughs> called it a, a foodie call. Oh. <laughs> a foodie call is when a woman is just looking for a guy that can take her out. Wow. A foodie call. And they said, I saw the stat. I don't know where they got this stat from. So take that with a grain of salt. But it, I just thought it was funny. And it said one out of three women normally just go out on a date for the free food and the free entertainment. entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But, you know, that's what we're talking about. Dating with purpose. What is your real purpose? And mm -hmm. you really need to know that about yourself because, you know, and some people know their users or know that they're just going to be out for whatever they can get on either side of the coin, you know, whether it's I'm going out for food or I'm going out for sex or whatever. But I think you need to be honest with yourself about what is the purpose of this date? What am I trying to do with this person? Are we getting to know each other? Are we getting to, you know, move along or is this just something to do? Um, you know, and some people put on their thing. I love it when they say, you know, what's your what are you looking for? And it'll be casual, long term. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, which one is it? Is it casual? Is it long term? Is it friendship? Is it a committed soulmate? What are you looking for? You all over the place. Yeah. So I they said, have a lot of options hey, on there. I'm going from <laughs> wall to wall. Whichever I can get in the moment, I'll, I'll be whatever I need to be. So I got a funny <laughs> story with that. So this was before the pandemic. So I went out with this woman and we went out a few times. Mm -hmm. And after about the second time that we hung out, she was like, you know what? You kind of give me more friend vibes. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, it happens. I got friend zone. Okay. But you date enough, it's going to happen to you on both sides of the exactly. equation. No big deal. So I was like, all right, cool. So then about a week later, this same senorita, mm -hmm. um, she reaches out to me like, hey, you want to go hang out or whatever? And I was like, all right, cool. She was cool. Yeah. You know, I had a good time hanging out with her. Mm -hmm. Uh, but remember, we had already had that conversation of yeah. basically friends. we're friends. Yeah. So we go out mm -hmm. and we're in Noda, somewhere in Noda. Uh -huh. And, you know, we're, we're drink, you know, having a drink, grubbing, having, right. ordered something to eat. 
And then the waiter comes like, hey, you know, do you want two checks? I'm like, yes, two <laughs> checks, please. And she did a double take. I think she did. <laughs> oh, she did a double take because I guess she was thinking, oh, I got Jorge out here. Oh. So I guess he got me for tonight. And I'm like, oh, no, ma'am. Remember, we established a new boundary now. I'm a friend. Right. And friends <laughs> don't normally pick up tabs for dinner unless it's a special occasion or... Yeah. I just feel like being charitable yeah, that cheating. night. If she asked you out, so oh, and on top of that, she asked me right. out. But I guess she was thinking, "Hey, I'm gonna ask for her to come hang out with me." I guess she, <laughs> she thought I was. Foodie call. She thought I was gonna be her foodie call for the night because her reaction when I said two checks was priceless. Wow, it was hysteric. And in my mind, I'm thinking, "Hey, you told me I'm." more of a friend right. well i'm just conducting myself with the new boundaries that you've established exactly honest <laughs> communication let us all participate in that, that was i don't know why but i just thought that was so funny and wow. i'm like hey you know what that's cool listen i don't mind being friend zone that yeah. happens i've made yeah. some good friends from dating exactly it's it's part of the game well and i think that's the other thing too like in this dating with purpose like some people aren't ready to be in a committed relationship mm -hmm. and especially if you're just getting out of something serious and you're still in your self-work zone but you just like some companionship you just like a little change of pace you know that's okay but be honest like i don't think i should go out with somebody that i know is has deep feelings for me and all i'm doing is going out for food right. you know what i mean that's to me that's taking advantage of someone i mean you're playing with people's emotions yes and you're playing with karma mm -hmm. uh, i think you're going to get burned doing that because eventually you're going to end up with somebody that you have feelings for and they're going to just be taking you out for the fun of it and and your feelings are going to get all up in there and hurt so Absolutely. you know i just again treating people the way you want to be treated if you just do the golden rule i think you'll You'll save yourself a lot of aggravation, but uh, we're going to take another short break before we um, round out with our last bit of uh, dating with purpose and hold on to your seats, people. It's going to be good. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's a great show. I feel like yeah. this has been some good conversation, and I feel like this is kind of like the elephant in the room. I feel like we take this for granted, mm -hmm. but some people just forget or they're lazy or they just haven't dated in a long time. Yeah. So some of these things can kind of get lost. And also, um, one thing that I feel like we do need to tackle is cell phone use. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Like when you're on a date, um, at least as a man, right? I try to be mindful not to not to be on my cell phone. Right. Now, I am guilty that when I see a, a, a delicious food, I have to take a picture of it. <laughs> and, the, and normally they know that, hey, this dude likes food, this dude likes food pictures. So I'm like, listen, let me take a quick social media break yeah. and I'll be right back with you. Exactly. And I let them know. But and then I put it away and, mm -hmm. and we keep it moving. Um, now I get it. Um, now you for know, me, I have kids, so I do leave mine out, Poppy. I feel you. But I'm like, if if it's nothing that I feel like is pressing, you know, if my kids call me twice in a row, I gotta answer because I'm like, if they've called me back to back like that, I'm a mother. I am a mother first. So, but I do let whoever's taking me out know that, like, you know, it's my kid. They call me twice now. I need to take this. Please excuse me again about communication and using your manners. But, you know, to have it out the whole time, no, you can't really be present if you're looking at your phone and looking Every at your social minutes. media. Yeah. I feel like probably, me, per just my opinion, um, if I'm out with a woman, right, who's got small kids or, mm -hmm. I don't know, an elderly mother or something like that, and she's concerned that something could be popping off, then my thing is, hey, do you want to just, you know, step away and handle your business and then come back? Mm -hmm. But to me, where it can kind of mess up the flow of the date is if like every two minutes you're, you're constantly yeah. checking your cell phone. Because then at that point, I feel like I'm trying to look you in the eyes and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. But you got your cell phone out and every minute you're checking to see, make sure that it wasn't Tommy or make sure that it wasn't grandma or whatever. Yeah. So my thing is, hey, listen, let whoever you need to let know that, hey, I'm, I'm going to be out on a date. So I'm not going to be completely on my phone. Mm -hmm. If it's an emergency, call me. Or text 911 or whatever it is, if yeah. it's an emergency. But my thing would be, if it's something going on, st step aside, yeah. handle the business, and then put your phone away and interact and enjoy the day. Exactly. And excusing yourself to go to the restroom is a good way to handle sure, that as absolutely. well. absolutely. You know, absolutely. I have my safety team, and they always check in to make sure how you're doing, how are things going. So I don't try to just pull it out right there in front yeah. of, you know, him to, to show him, you know, first of all, I don't always broadcast that I have a safety team. 
uh, for one thing, because the element of surprise is important in case this is not a good date and I need to get sprung out of it. Um, but also just because, again, you want to you want to put some time, if you're going to invest the time to get ready to drive to wherever you're going or get picked up or whatever the case may be, you want to enjoy that time getting to know this person and see if it's if it's going to be a good fit or not. And if you keep getting interrupted with your phone, whether it's legitimate or not, if it's a continuous interruption, you may not be ready to date. Your life may still be too cluttered for you to be mm. out on a date. That's, that's another thing you need to consider. That's a very important point. Um, and plus, if you're physically there, but your mind is what's going on at home, yeah. then I don't know. I don't know. Are you really enjoying the date? You know no, what I mean? You couldn't be. You know, so I don't to me, think so. I don't know. I try to be mindful. Yeah. Unless it's like a, a, a dope food pick. Then yeah. all bets are off. But I handle my business, and then I put it away, and I'm you have my undivided attention. Yeah. But I want to tackle something else: uh, courtship. Oh, and what is that? Uh, yeah, <laughs> what is that? Right? <laughs> that shit's gotten so like Ooh. distorted now. Like God knows what that is nowadays. Um, so, Poppy, can I jump in right here go because ahead. I have a story? All right, hit me. When I was 15, uh -oh. this is how old I am. Okay. When I was 15, my parents agreed that I could be courted. Ooh. So it was actually something you did in dating when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I would have, you know, whoever would come to the house. Um, and at that time, I had a, I, don't, I only had, you know, one boyfriend. And it wasn't like I was dating multiple people at that time. Right. So uh, I've evolved. Um, <laughs> but you know, he would come to the house, he would get to stay over for a certain set time, you know, he had to leave at a certain time, you know, we'd be downstairs in a certain place and, you know, the public part of the in, house. Your dad came and opened the door with a shotgun, hey, no, come in, son. he didn't. My mama's <laughs> eyes probably could have shot bullets out of him. He did something crazy. Now, my daddy was going to be right there to, to handle whatever. Yeah, he was the quiet presence that you just didn't really want to try. But my mama, she is the one that, like, that's the gatekeeper, so... You know, she'd always give them the precious cargo speech as oh, well. Hell. But, you know, courting, that's that's what I grew up knowing. And so I told my own daughter, so I was like, well, when you're 15, you get to court. Well, you know, one daughter, she never had a boyfriend during that time in high school. She stayed too busy. I bet you were thankful, huh? Well, yeah, because she really was not ready to date. You know, she, she was younger than the rest of her classmates. She was born in September. So I felt like she wasn't as mature yet and ready. Uh -huh. So she finally does have a boyfriend in college. But, you know, just... I wanted them to know it's okay to bring someone around your family. It's okay for them to get to know you within a certain boundary. And so I think courtship to me now still says that same sort of feeling like I want to get to know you without all of these extras you know, around us. Right. In my in my mind, I still think about being 15 and being courted. So my thing <laughs> is this. Um, I am a big proponent for a man courting a woman if he is interested in her and they are both interested in each other for the mm -hmm. same purpose, mm -hmm. right? Um, however, I feel like oftentimes I feel like I'm the damn wily Coyote and mm -hmm. she's the roadrunner and I'm just like in a constant chase Yeah, and it just... It's like, it's like trying to round up a bunch of chickens or something. You know what I mean? It's like, shit, like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm trying to court her, but I don't know where this is going yeah. or uh, either the timing doesn't line up or, um, there's just a lot of gray area and listen, um, I feel like women definitely have to help with the courtship. Right. Like, I'll give you an example, right? If. If I'm asking you out on a date, right? Mm -hmm. If I tell you Saturday night, hey, you know what? I really want to take you out Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And you tell me I'm busy on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Then to me, that's discouraging because I'm like, damn, I, I wanted to take her out. But she's saying I'm busy. Right. So what would be encouraging for me in a situation like that would be, hey, you know what? I'm busy. But... Next Tuesday, I'm available. Right. We could do Taco Tuesday if that works for you. Right. And if a woman is is interested in you, then she's going to, she can decline and then just give you a follow up, an, an outlet yeah. of, hey, I'm busy this weekend, but next weekend I'm, I'm free, free or next Tuesday I'm available. So that way that shows me that, hey, 
she she saw that yeah. I was trying to take her out and she acknowledged that and now she's telling me when it could work for her and yeah. then I need to you know see whether that works but yeah. oftentimes if a woman tells me hey I'm big, I, I'm a two strike mm-hmm. guy I usually try to you know make two attempts yeah and if they give me the runaround or they're telling me that they're too busy then I'm like you let me know when you're not busy and then we'll check go from and, there, and then yeah. we can go from there and if and if she didn't reach out or he didn't reach out to you mm-hmm. then they probably you probably weren't that high in their, in their priority yeah uh well i think we've had some really good tips today I, we're probably on overload right now so you probably have to listen to the show once or twice extra <laughs> uh, <laughs> please make sure guys uh that you leave us some comments at Jorge and Nelsa at gmail.com. That's J O R G E A N D N E L S A at gmail.com. Um, we would love to have your input from the show. If you're following us on social media, uh, Nelsa Weber or Jorge Medina, then please let us know what your thoughts are about the show and what you'd like to hear more of because we're on this relationship cycle together and we want to try to give you tips that will help you out on that road to to finding your true love or just finding yourself a real good uh, partner who maybe you can um, do a podcast with. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But this is this has been our show for today. Thanks, guys. We hope to have you back on our next show. Okay. Thanks for joining us today. Our questions today came from the show, Stefan Speaks. Check them out on YouTube. If you have any suggestions or relationship stories to share, 